So in today's video, I'm gonna show how I built this beefy double door wooden gate. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end because I'm gonna share why I think this is the most important step to help ensure that your gate doesn't sag. Okay, so here is the space here. I'm gonna put a double gate going this way. I start off, I set a string line that's relatively level and I found my center point. And I know I want my door to be about eight and a half feet wide or at least the rough opening to be eight and a half feet wide. So I found my center point. I marked there and over here will be where my post will go on this side and then I have another mark over there and then the next step is to just use a post hole diggers dig a deep and fat hole so we're gonna put two posts on each side and a lot of concrete to hold it now it's important to note before you dig any holes before building a fence or anything you really need to know where your underground utilities are and their services in every county that I'm aware of that will come out and do that for you anyway I know there's no utilities or pipes or anything here however seems like every post hole I dig for this fence, there's rocks and roots and it's a pain in the butt. So it takes a lot longer than anticipated to dig these holes. And in my holes, Doug, I'm gonna put my post in the ground and I'm using two four by fours both together. All right. So once I get the pole plumb, I run these braces. All right, so there it is, cemented in place. And we'll come back and do the same thing over here. So I went ahead and I have both poles set now, and then I went ahead and framed out and actually fenced this portion of the opening here. And now what this will do is add additional support in addition to the concrete we already placed. So the next step is to get an accurate measurement in our space here and to start making the gate. So I went ahead and cut all my gate framing pieces. My space is about 102 inches. It's about eight and a half feet. I made my total frame about an inch smaller than that. And then this is actually gonna be two doors, but I'm gonna go ahead and build one big door first and then cut it into the two doors. What I'm just gonna do here is do simple butt joints. I'm gonna use these really long lag type screws and to help get a square configuration, I went ahead and I clamp a speed square to the side of this, get a screw started, I'll screw the whole thing together and then I'll check for squareness again, build this frame out and then put it in one piece and then I think I'll cut it in two pieces later. We'll see how that goes. Now for my cross braces, I'm gonna use some old cedar I have left over from another project. I'll put it underneath mark my lines and then cut it out. Uh, the important thing is that that would be the bottom hinge and it will point up towards the outside of the gate that will open. Just gonna mark it. Now that's all cut, I can slide it in. And then I'll use the long screws to go into there too. Now I'm using the cedar here, one, because I have it, but two, it allows me to use a little bit wider board. The cedar's pretty light and it's very rot resistant. And when I put these long lag type screws in, that's gonna really beef up these joints as well. I'll do the same thing, put one here and two down there as well. All right, so this one's in. I'm gonna come back and put a screw in here as well after I cut this. And then I'm gonna repeat that process on this side. So with this, this, and these, these joints are gonna be pretty snug. Now to beef up these opposite corners, I went ahead and I cut some scrap cedar wood to make braces like that. And then I'll just use the long lag screws as well to snug that down. And that will stiffen these joints that don't have the angle brace in it. Make these joints nice and stiff and keep it square. So I'm just gonna temporarily screw off these two scrap boards here and then I can actually mount my gate frame to this, get a nice square and plumb. And then once everything's hinged and ready to go, we can take these down and the gate should be right where it needs to be. So now I have the gate frame exactly where I want an opening. I can go ahead and temporarily screw it off to these temporary uh, brace boards. Now with the gate frame braced off, I can go ahead and cut the two gates free because they're gonna be supported by this. And get the cleanest cut, I'm just gonna use a handsaw with a speed square to help guide it. Now I can install the hinges. I'm using these beefy 10 inch long stainless steel ones. I really think for outside gates, stainless steel is the way to go. Plus these are really robust. But the idea here is I'm gonna put it about here, get the hinge in position. I'll mark my first hole. Pre-relent hole. Get the hinge in. 
I'm gonna start it with an impact and I'll finish it with a screwdriver. I'll mark my other holes, drill them out, and our hinge will be screwed up. So what I'm gonna do now is instead of putting a traditional like locking mechanism, I'm just gonna put a brace bar. I'm gonna use this beam that will sit on these blocks that I just installed. And I'll slide back and forth you can open the gate. And what this does is actually gives the gate some more structure and wins the little single gate latches. Just don't have a lot of ump behind them, so I think this is a better way to go. And then what I'll do is come back and put these blocks in. They're attached with some screws. And then the concept behind this lock is, is you just take this board, move it out of the way, and the gate can swing open. Shut the gate, slide it back over, and you got a little bit of beef holding your gate together. Now we can cut the gate loose if we want. All right, moment of truth, I'm gonna take out these screws that are supporting the gate. Hopefully it doesn't sag. Put a little line here to see if it's gonna move or not. So here we go. Okay, I'm gonna take this one out too. So this side is free and it didn't move. Let's try this one. Now it's flopping loose now. Looks like it's handling the load okay, but the door will open like this. So there we go. Open both sides. No sagging. I want to close it like this. Slide this across. And we're closed. So finally what I did is I installed these down rods and they give some security and some stability to the fence down here in addition to up here. So when the gate is shut, this is nice and solid now. And all I gotta do is lift up on it then we can open the gate and then to put it back down and then to install these I just put I used a cinder block filled with concrete and used a piece of PVC pipe and that should do the trick and I also went ahead and installed one of these down rod holders so the gate can stay open and again this is just some PVC pipe down about a foot or so into the ground secured in concrete and it does the job to hold the fence door nice and stiff and again this will take away any of the damage that could potentially be done when these doors will just be flopping around in the wind so i think it's very important if not one of the most important steps in making a double door gate to have some sort of fixed open positioning lock system and that's essentially what this is doing for us here and so now here is our gate opened in a nice secured position the wind's not going to flop these doors around so it should minimize any damage that potentially be done if they were not secured. Works pretty well.